Okay, today I'm going to be talking about instancing static meshes with morph targets um, in Unreal Engine. Um, to create flocking like behavior. So you can have <coughs> a lot of meshes rendered at the same time. Um, and not take a massive uh, performance hit. They are actually moving as well. Um, they do have they do have some um, morphing that's happening on them, which we can take a look at in a second. I'm just going to go through how um, I created that. Currently it will be black because it's using the per instance random value which I'll explain in a second. <coughs> um, I could increase the the morph values here a bit as well. Um, that's why it's barely visible. And it's only only morphing on um, level of detail zero. So as soon as it hits I see I did it on one two but on, uh, on level of detail two it's not not moving. It's barely um, visible from the when the screen size gets too small. That's fine. <coughs> so the idea is you're gonna be creating A lot of these meshes <coughs> in the game, and then not take a massive performance uh, penalty. These guys don't have um, collision on them. You could have collision on your instances if you wanted, but these guys don't. So you could, I mean. We could render quite a few. Let's see if I push this up more. between one and uh, five thousand meshes being rendered here and they all have um, semi-random material values or per instance random material values which I'll explain in a second but, uh, they don't have collision on them and they're all moving um, randomly as well using the um, they will have their own transform, but they're all sharing the same mesh. I just quickly want to show, um, first of all, this static mesh morphing here. Um, in Unreal Engine, you can't just import a static mesh that has morph targets or have morph targets. You have to do. You have to bring it in um, in the UV set and then create a material specifically for that. Um, so what <coughs> you have to do is, once you have your, your mesh, um, you start creating your morph targets. So I'm just going to create two here. So what you could do is have your Let's 
just gonna do a quick and dirty here. Normally I could use a deformer here or whatever. <coughs> Take this to here. So I'm just doing these two to play around with. So I have two here. <coughs> then what you would do is you would use um, a script to get the morph targets from from this um, static machine to the UV set. Um, and the script I actually got from the Unreal Engine forums. It was done by um, Mike Waterworth, I guess. Um, he did this script called uh, Static Mesh Morph Morpher Packer, which ca um, originally came from a Mac script done by uh, Jonathan Lindquist at Epic Games. And currently, this is the only way to get static uh, meshes with more targets into Unreal Engine. Um, so all you would do then is you would you'd have to first get your targets separate so that's pretty simple you just morph to the shape where you want um, and then I'm just going to duplicate it. So that would be the first target. duplicate it out for the second target and then what you do is select your targets first and then the um, original with the blend shapes on them and then you just run the script it's a mel script not a python script Takes a few seconds to run. What it's doing is calculating the offsets uh, from the vertices based uh, from the original and then um, putting those values those differences in a, into UV space taking a bit longer than usual to run, but okay. Um, then once it's done, I'm going to remove these two and just take a look at the UVs here for a second. So it, cr it creates these um, UV sets. And there's your original UVs as well. Then what you do is you just you can still then go and create your level of detail for these guys using the normal whatever way you prefer. I, I just use this um, generate from Maya. And then you would just export this as an FBX using the normal um, settings. You don't need to choose anything special here. Obviously not all the morph targets are gone. Um, then once you import it into Unreal Engine, You have to create a special material to handle this. Um, setup is a little bit tricky. And that comes from um, from Unreal Engine's documentation. Um, 
how to do this. And you have to use a static mesh morph targets node. And then it goes through a series of clamps and lerps or linear interpolations. Um, from a time value. So I'm <coughs> I've also included this per instance random here because I want um, the per instance random gives you a, a different value. It's a constant value, but it's different for each instance. Uh, so each mesh will have their own value here. So I'm using that to just offset the animation first of all a little bit. And secondly to um, to also change a, uh, change the color of the um, the material a little bit with a darken. Oh, well, actually, I'm just using a multiply. I'm not even using a darken here. So this setup here is a little uh, tricky. I'm also using a, s a linear sign so that it can uh, morph to and from, so that it looks like it's uh, got some kind of movement. But around the the morph target itself is not. Um, it's not very uh, exaggerated, and it, it um, doesn't look all that uh, great. To you. I mean, you can spend as much time as you want to. And the nice thing is, once you have this done, this setup, you can always change it and come back and improve on it and make changes. The reason it's black is because it's using this per instance um, random is actually a zero. That's why the color is all dark because it's multiplying zero here into the texture sample here, so I'm getting black. So, so I'll, be, I'll, be, I'll be fiddling with these also a little bit. Then, um, I, the flock itself, so now it's just a static mesh. Um, then for the, the flock itself, I created a blueprint <coughs> that contains an instant static mesh component. Now, um, the instance static mesh component um, provided by Unreal Engine allows you to render um, lots of meshes um, using the same mesh, but it will use um, different um, transformations for each mesh. And they can also have um, share the same materials. Now, because I'm using that per instance random, you can use that to get more random values out of it. So it's very, very... Um, Optim well optimized. The only uh, drawback is you can't do this for skeletal meshes, so you can't have meshes with skeletal animation um, rendered um, instanced using this um, this component. I don't know if there is another another way currently to render skeletal meshes instant instance because um, it's you know that they've all got, they're all going to have their their own skeletons anyway. Um, and they all, all have to be unique. So then all this blueprint does, um, it has a few variables here where I can control um, how these guys should get spawned. And if I just drop a cube in here s for a second, you can see the basically um, how it's working. So I've attached a cube to this, this sphere here. This is a sphere that has collision on it. And I use this sphere, this is what the, all the instances will follow. Um, and if it detects collisions, it will change course and just choose choose places to go to. Um, and then the instances themselves are moved in each tick a little bit using this um, vector interpolate too. So I, I um, have a few arrays here where I keep the original offset of where they spawn uh, within the um, spawn radius. So when this thing uh, kicks off in the begin play, um, it calls this um, shoot enabled. Now this is um, gonna get called every, I think three seconds or whatever. It's on a timer, and then it just calls it again here at the end. Set timer by function name. And this just checks based on um, distance from the um, camera if whether or not it should take this actor because I don't want all these fish moving um, and this whole blueprint must become disabled once it's a certain distance from the player. And these instant static meshes also have their draw distance set up. 
and this is less than the value that I'm using here so that will stop rendering and a little bit further the blueprint itself will just stop and then all the fish will stop moving uh, which is actually what I want and then this, this guy is also responsible for initializing all the instances um, when it detects it's the first time it's getting enabled and it's just talking to this instant static mesh component adding instances here and then just recording um, where the offset was where it decided to spawn this particular instance and then um, every now and then it just uh, also varies the speed I have an initial speed and I think this gets varied as well or it might not get varied I think it just uses that speed once um, once it created a child, just use that speed in the um, this move fish function here which gets, gets called in the event graph so every tick um, it'll call this move fish function obviously if tick is disabled it won't do this so this guy here basically chooses the sphere here chooses a random um, location and then slowly well, fast moves to there doesn't doesn't matter and then the fish will follow Yeah, I do actually do vary the speed again after it's chosen a new um, location for each instance. So now you'll see as the cube moves around, the fish will actually follow. Follow the, they're following the, the sphere. So I've just attached the cube there to make it a bit more visible. And then they've all got a little bit of random, um, a little bit of random movement, random scale. Just a little bit of more random values attached to them. Okay. To show another um, demo again. So I'll, I'll need to play with these um, textures a little bit more. But this is what it looks like in um, substance when I textured it. Obviously the mesh isn't, I'm not paying too much attention to the mesh. I might just redo it uh, later. So the idea is here you can get a lot of a lot of meshes here rendered and these are th th these guys are all spread around, these spawners are all spread around over the um, over the map. And then as they fall out of a particular um, distance, then they'll stop rendering and stop updating. Disappeared. And they're back again. Cool. 